Hi, I'm Michelle Christensen of michellechristensen.com, and I'm a speaker, strategist, and champion for solopreneurs or one-person businesses. Earlier this year, I gave my email subscribers the chance to ask me anything about their business, and this video is the answer to one of those questions. Now, here is the exact question I was asked. I'm struggling with a time management system. I know many people use time trade, but I feel like I'm missing a step in setting it up. Any suggestions? Now, my first comment on this question is to clarify what's being asked. I'm not sure if it's just a word usage issue, but I would not call time trade a time management system. Unfortunately, I set up my offer so that my subscribers could submit their questions anonymously, so I can't ask for more information. Since I'm not sure I'm going to cover this, video, this question in two different videos, the first is this video, and I'll cover time trade, which I use and recommend. And the second will be on my time management system. Now, time trade is an automated appointment scheduler that lets you it lets your clients or anyone book appointments with you based on your real time updated availability. And when I use the phrase time management system, I'm thinking more about a way of keeping track of your time and your tasks and making sure you're working on the right thing at the right time. So that's why I'm going to do two different videos. They were really two different things to me. Now, as I mentioned, time trade is a way for people to schedule appointments with you without your help. When you set up time trade, uh, you link it to your online calendar, such as Google Calendar, iCal, or Outlook. And time trade will show your guest when you're available based on that calendar and some rules you create during setup. One great thing is that time trade doesn't show your guest what you're doing when you're not available, which is great if you like to sneak out for some fun during the week like I do. The big problem that time trade solves is the back and forth process of appointment scheduling. Before I started using time trade, I would give someone a few times to pick from when they wanted to work with me. Then I would wait to hear back. In the meantime, all the times I gave them are on hold and not available to other people. That in turn means that I can't confirm with those other people and they can't confirm with people they want to meet with them. And sometimes get, just getting a meeting set up can be multiple messages back and forth. So can you see the wave of inefficiency this sets up not only for me, but for everyone I want to work with? So now I'm going to show you a screenshot of uh, time trade and I'm going to demonstrate some of the features. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Okay. So you should see time trade right now. And uh, the first thing I want to point out, this is the home screen. I'm logged in. This is the screen you see uh, when you first log in. And this is where you manage your account from. So the first thing I want to point out is all these different types of activities that I have in the left-hand column. So I have all different sorts of activities for all different needs. Um, each one has different instructions and um, when you send someone the link for that activity, that's all they can schedule on that page. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. But I'm going to actually show you how one of these works from the perspective of a customer or client or whoever you want to meet with. So I'm going to use this one here that you see has a yellow highlight because I clicked on it. It's the recorded 60-minute coaching session. Uh, up here, the first thing you see are activity details, and these are details I've put in. Uh, in this case, since it's recorded, I'm telling people to call into my conference line, and it gives them all the information they need to do that. I could actually say something other than that, such as, um, you know, call me on Skype or something like that, but you can specify that in your instructions. The availability is just the availability that is based on your calendar and the rules you set up. Now, I'm going to show you what this preview link looks like. Right here from your own account, you can see what your uh, guests will see. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and this is what a guest would see if I sent them to this page to schedule an appointment with me. So there's a little welcome message here, and uh, I also mentioned that they'll have to put in an email, but it's just to get a confirmation, and you'll see that later. So I'll click Continue. And this is actually my availability right now. So you can see that my first available day would be next Friday. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and pick the 11.30 time slot. Click Continue. And then on this page, Time Trade asks your guest for their first and last name and their email address and their phone number, if that's what you've specified in the instructions. And um, the reason it asks for an email is only to send out a confirmation and a reminder. So I do like to let people know they're not signing up for anything and they won't get repeated emails. It's only for a confirmation. And it's actually great because you both get a confirmation, so you know that you're both really clear on when and where you're meeting and how you're meeting. Um, this section down here, uh, I have, please make sure you've completed your coaching intake form before scheduling your session. And you can make that say whatever you want. Like you can have them complete a form or um, give them a question to think about. And, you know, for some other types of appointments, I say, please 
give the top three priorities you want to cover during your session. So they would fill this out, click the continue button, and then they would get a confirmation email, and so would you, and it would be on the calendar that's attached to your time trade account. So I use Google Calendar, and when people book these, it just automatically shows up. Um, so, yeah, I think that's everything there is to demonstrate here. Um, you can set up new appointments, you can also change your appointments, and you can copy one type of appointment to another to create a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Okay, looks like I'm back. Okay, so um, one of the best features of Time Trade is the ability to set up different appointments like I showed you. And I think setting up the right kind of appointments is one of the keys to successfully using Time Trade. For example, if you meet with people by phone, you can set up time trades so that people can book a 15-minute call or a 30-minute call or any length you specify. When people use the link you gave them for that activity, that's all they can schedule. So if you have a coaching client that you work with in 30-minute phone sessions, you can send them a link to schedule their session, and they can't accidentally schedule a 15-minute session or a full-hour session. Your regular clients can schedule their appointments without any intervention from you. And since your availability is updated in real time, you won't get double booked or have to go back and forth trying to find a time when you're both available. Another thing I love about Time Trade is that I can use it to schedule a quick call with someone I've never met. Sometimes I get a cold call from someone who wants me to advertise with them or be an exhibitor at their event or use their services. If I'm interested in talking to them, I send them a link to schedule a 15-minute call. Not only does it save the back and forth phone tag, but it also sets an expectation ahead of time that this will be a 15-minute call. It helps uh, weed out people who aren't serious. If a person can't set and stick to an appointment time while trying to win my business, I probably won't enjoy working with them down the road. Um, now, I have a book out called The Solopreneur's Success Strategy, Automate Your Grunt Work. And that whole book is about automation processes, like ways that you can use automation so that you aren't doing things by hand in your solopreneur business. And I actually have an entire chapter devoted to time trade in that book. So uh, for a much more detailed explanation, you can pick up that book in the Kindle store, and I'll give you details on that later. But some of the tips I share in the, in the time trade chapter are, well, first, you have to be very precise in, or more precise in your scheduling than you would be without time trade. So it's not enough just to put something on your calendar for Thursday afternoon or to know that you're going to go out and do some errands some point on Thursday. You have to actually put that block of time in your calendar so that time trade knows that you're not available and you won't get an appointment scheduled at that time. Another thing is, is that you have to stay more on top of your schedule given that other people can now put themselves on your calendar. If you can only handle five client appointments in a day, then make sure you don't get more than that scheduled. Uh, another thing is don't forget to allow for transition time between appointments. If I fi finish an appointment across town at 2 p.m., I can't be in my home office for a phone appointment at 2 p.m. I need to manually put in some time to get home and get ready for my call. So in summary, I think the keys to using Time Trade or any other appointment scheduler well are, number one, keep your calendar up to date and clean. Block out your time off and any other time you know you aren't available as soon as you know about it. And number two is set up appointment types to make it as easy on your guests as possible. Make sure that you send them to a link where the only thing they can do is the thing they're trying to do. So that might be a 30-minute call or a 15-minute call or whatever. But make sure that you have a link that only lets them do what it is that they want to do. Now, for more detailed information on Time Trade, you can grab my book, The Solopreneur's Success Strategy, Automate Your Grunt Work, in the Kindle store. And by the way, you don't need a Kindle device to read Kindle books. You can get an app for your uh, phone or, or tablets, and you can also use the free Kindle desktop reader. If you want more information like this to help you build your solopreneur business, make sure you join my email subscriber list. Go to michellechristiansen.com and sign up there. In the series, I'll answer the other part of this question and tell you about my time management system. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you later.